Hello, this is Johnny Chisholm and this video will give you a brief introduction to the first release of Conservation Desktop. Here are some new terms that the planner should be aware of in Conservation Desktop. In Toolkit, we have Customers, Customer Folders, and Plans. In CD, we will have Clients, Case Files, and Practice Schedules. These terms are generally interchangeable in understanding but the CD terms better fit the way field offices operate. For example, most field offices refer to hard copy files stored in their filing cabinets for their landowners as case files, not customer folders. CD uses that same term to represent that information. Many field offices have been confused by the plan term used in toolkit. At one time, field offices were advised that the customer should only have one plan and toolkit. In later releases, the customer could have many plans. If you think outside the toolkit realm, a customer should only have one conservation plan. That plan may include several components, such as a nutrient management plan, a grazing plan, an integrated pest management plan, etc but they are all a part of his conservation plan. It makes more sense to think of different parts of his conservation plan as practice schedules. He may have a schedule to accomplish grazing practices and nutrient management practices, but he may also have a schedule to implement 2014 EQIP practices and 2017 EQIP practices. Those should not be considered plans but schedules to implement his overall conservation plan. The first release of CD will consist of two parts, the technical assistance, or TA part, and the financial assistance, or FA part. Let's take a look at the TA part. The TA part will have functions similar to Toolkit. Just like in Toolkit, upon starting CD, the user must first set their preferences. They would do that by clicking the circle with their initials in the upper right portion of the CD window. In the service center management, the user can set the service centers in which they need to work based on their Z roles permissions. The user can have multiple service centers, however only one can be their default service center. Like in Toolkit, the user can also select applicable land uses, programs, practices, servicing offices and conservation districts that they will need in their work activities. After the preferences are set, the first screen the user will see upon entering CD will be the map view. The map will zoom to the user's default service center. In this case, there is no client selected, so CD zooms to the default service center and there is no table of contents on the left side. The table of contents will appear after a client is selected. Notice the zoom tools in the upper left. The user may use these tools to zoom in or zoom out or zoom to the home extent. The home extent is the default service center unless a client is selected. If a client is selected, the home extent is the client's case plan land units. To select the client, the user must use the search tool by clicking the magnifying glass in the upper right portion of the CD window. In this case, we have entered part of the client's name and have clicked the orange search button. Case files for clients with Morris as part of their name are displayed in the case files window. If we click on one of the rows in the case files windows, schedules or toolkit plans for the case file are displayed in the schedules table. If we click the hyperlinked case file name, the case file will open. The case file opens, the map zooms to the case file case POUs, and the client case file name and schedule name is added to the table of contents on the left side of the CD window. Notice that this table of contents is different from what ArcMap and Toolkit displays. In CD, Client information is shown in the table of contents. The map properties are accessed from the GIS toolbar on the right side. The Layer Preferences button 
allows the user to set their preferences for layers that are displayed on the map. Settings for the layer preferences are saved for the user and determine the default information displayed on the map each time a user starts CD or changes customers. There are three tabs of types of information. The first is the features tab. The user can set which layers are available and which layers are visible when CD is opened. The second tab is the reference layers. Again, the user can set which layers are available and which layers are visible when CD is opened. The third tab is the background layers. The user can set which layers are available and which background is the default map background when CD is opened. The map content button and menu is similar to the table of contents in ArcMap. The menu allows the user to change the current display on the map. Note that only layers set as available in the layer preferences will be listed and changes to the map contents are only saved for the current session of CD. If CD is closed or a different customer is selected, the displayed layers will revert to the layers selected in the layer preferences. The base map gallery button and menu allows the user to change the current base map displayed on the map. Note that only base maps set as available in the layer preferences will be listed and changes to the base map are only saved for the current session of CD. If CD is closed or a different customer is selected, the base map will revert to the default base map selected in the layer preferences. Notice the attribute tables for the map are shown at the bottom of the screen. To view the tables, the user can click the Show Tables button. Tables can be accessed by clicking the Table tab, and features can be selected on the map or in the table. To close the tables, click the Hide Tables button. With Release 1, there is no option to add to or edit this or other information, such as practices or land units. That functionality is coming in future releases of Conservation Desktop. One functionality that is included with CD Release 1 is the availability to add and edit assistance notes. Few field offices enter assistance notes in Toolkit, mainly because of the time required to check out the customer folder, enter the assistance notes, and then check the customer folder back in. There are a number of reasons to enter the assistance notes in CD, such as there is less time required to enter the note since CD is online and there is no need to take the time to check the customer folder out to a local computer and then back in to the National Planning and Agreements database. Generally, planning staff uses Toolkit and program staff uses Protrax. Since CD integrates those two systems, a program staff member that needs to review the assistance notes would simply have to search for and select the client to review the notes. Also, staff that work multiple service centers can enter information in the assistance notes without having to go to the servicing office and record notes on the hard copy assistance notes. To add a new note, just click the Add New Note button. A form opens where the note can be added. The program can be selected and additionally a note title can be added. The note title could be very useful in locating applicable notes in the future. Some examples might be client contact, objective, resource concerns, practice certification, or the contract or application number could be used as a note title to help program staff review applicable notes for a contract or application. There is also a spell check button. Once the note is entered, click the Save button. 
Notice that the assistance note has been added. Since the assistance notes are stored in MPAD, notes entered in CD will be available in Toolkit and notes entered in Toolkit will be available in CD. Now let's look at an example of the TA and FA integration in CD. The client has applied for the eCrypt program. At this point, we could go to Protracts and enter the application, or we could click on the Add Application link in the table of contents. Once we click the Add Application link, Protracts opens at the New Conservation Program application screen where we can enter the details for the application. Let's recap the TA part of CD Release 1. It will have limited TA or toolkit functionality, mainly in viewing existing information. However, the assistance notes part of CD could be a time saver and would make the process of entering electronic assistance notes much easier. Let's look at some of the financial assistance or Protrax functionality in CD. The CD search window has Protrax links so the user can open Protrax directly from within CD. An added functionality of CD is the addition of financial assistance tasks. The list of tasks are accessed within CD from the task button on the upper right of the CD window. There are three tabs, Assigned to Me, Available to Me, and Completed by Me. The user can see details of the task by clicking the Open icon to the left of the task. Here we have opened an Applicant Eligibility Issue task. This task was created because an applicant did not meet some eligibility requirements. If the user clicks the Applicant Eligibility Issue Task link, CD will open the applicable part of Protrax to deal with the issue, in this case the Eligibility and Payment Limitations window. Notice that the participant has not filed their AGI eligibility information. The user would then close the Protrax window. The user may need to take some action. In this case, they need to inform the participant that the AGI eligibility documents need to be filed. So they do that and then click Start Work. Once the work is started, the task will now appear on the Assign to Me tab. The user could add a comment that they inform the participant to submit the AGI information. The comment is recorded. Once the eligibility has been resolved in the system, the task will auto-complete the following day. So we see a list of tasks that have been assigned to the user, including the current task. On the Completed by Me tab, tasks that have been completed will appear. Note that most tasks will automatically complete once the task is worked. Rank Application is the only task in Release 1 that has to be marked complete by the user. Task may follow a certain workflow. For example, if a CCC 1200 is uploaded to DMS for the client or the client submits an application through Conservation Client Gateway, a new application task will be added. Once the user works the new application task by entering it in Protrax, it will be marked complete and a determined application eligibility task will be created. Once the determined application eligibility task is worked in Protrax, it will be marked completed and either an ineligible application task or a rank application task will be created depending on the eligibility of the application. Another advantage to CD is the integrated search 
which not only searches for case files and practice schedules for a client, but also finds all program contracts and applications associated to the client. If you scroll down in the search window, you will see not only case files for a client, but also applications and contracts. In this case, the search return records for clients that contain bicycle in the client name. If we open the first one by clicking the hyperlinked contract number, the client case file and contract information is added to the conservation desktop table of contents. If the user clicks on the contract number to open the contract, several options are available. The client and agreement information link opens that information in Conservation Desktop. Here the user can quickly view the client information and the contract items. The contracts items table can be sorted or filtered to assist with finding details about the contract quickly. There are other links to Protracts for administering the contract. If the user clicks the Manage Contract link, the Manage Contracts window of Protracts opens. From the search window, if you click the hyperlinked application number for an application, the client case file and application information is added to the Conservation Desktop table of contents. If the user clicks on the application number to open the application, several options are available. The Client and Agreement Information link opens that information in Conservation Desktop. Here the user can quickly view the client information. The Eligibility and Vendor Information link opens that information in Conservation Desktop. Here the user can quickly view the vendor information and can even update some of that information to be saved to Protracts. If the user clicks the Open Application link, the application window of Protracts opens. Field users may find some advantages of using Conservation Desktop over Toolkit or Protracts in time savings. To summarize, Release 1 of Conservation Desktop will allow the user to more quickly view technical assistance or toolkit information such as land units and practice schedules, which will be especially beneficial for non-toolkit users. The user will be able to quickly enter electronic assistance notes for clients and allow non-toolkit users to easily view those assistance notes. The user will be able to more efficiently search for technical and financial assistance due to the integrated search that finds case files and contracts or applications for the client. Conservation Desktop will provide a system to handle financial assistance tasks which will streamline the financial assistance process and a user will be able to quickly access contract and application information from directly in Conservation Desktop and will be able to access Protracts directly from within Conservation Desktop. At this point, Conservation Desktop will not replace Toolkit or Protracts, but it fully interfaces with those tools. Thank you, and I hope this presentation has given you a brief introduction to Conservation Desktop Release 1.